18 states require personal finance education in schools. Thankfully, here's what they're teaching kids about money, however. So uh, if, you look, if you look at the, uh, if the uh, six critical topic areas in a personal finance studies, earning income, spending, saving, investing, managing credit, managing risk. Amen. That's great. Um, Erica, talk to us about uh, financial education from what you know of so far in the Chicago public school system. Is it something that is getting incorporated from a teacher's perspective? Are they not talking about it? Is, it's not in, is it in the curriculum? It is not. Currently, it is not. And it, I think Jordan. this is it's imperative yeah. that we start incorporating this. Yeah. I mean, some of us, I mean, I, okay, I'll speak for myself. I mean, some of these things, like learning about Roth IRAs and how to use your credit, you know, yeah. like yeah. credit cards aren't bad. You just have yeah. to know how to use them, yeah. right, to your advantage with the points and the travel, you know, the, yeah. all of these things, no one teaches you that. And I mean, I think most of us, like I'm first generation, you know, my yeah, parents, first generation too, right. Yeah. My dad's from Central America. My mom's from South America. You know, they don't, oh, really? they come here and they grind. Yeah. Which, my, which, uh, my dad is from Costa Rica okay. and my mom is from Pura vida, pura vida. Yes. Yeah. Okay. Yes. From? And uh, Ecuador. My mom's from That's Ecuador. But you know, one thing I would probably add to this is making sure you pick the right relationship in your life. I mean, I think mm. every CEO would admit that picking the wrong wife and ladies, the wrong husband can destroy your wealth. You know, we see many times in, 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 for example, one of the hangout spots, Gibson's, um, mm. my, my wife didn't like me hanging out at Gibson's. She called that, uh, what she called it? Oh. She called it Viagra. Uh, no, no. What'd she call it? Well, that is in the Viagra R- Triangle Russia, area. Right, yeah, Russia, the Vi- yeah. You know, Viagra <laughs> Triangle. Yep. Which is what? <laughs> Stereotypically 50, 60 year old men mm-hmm. finding 20 year old um, um, uh, new girlfriends yeah. mm-hmm. or 50 year old divorced women with new wealth, half the wealth, you finding 20, 30 year old boy toys. Little boy boys, yeah, yeah. yeah. Mm-hmm. So, uh, what's, your, what's your thoughts? I mean, you've obviously been very, very proactive on making sure you don't bring the wrong mm-hmm. fella into your life. Mm-hmm. Is, is that something that you've been also aware of when putting yourself in that process? Yeah, definitely. And especially more so now, you know, that I'm an older woman, um, more mature, more mature. Yes. (laughs) You learn right from experience. Um, and you're just not going to bring just anybody around, right? Like you work so hard. I've worked so hard to achieve what I have, you know? And, uh, yeah. So, yeah, uh, I want to, uh, if if you could journey, if you can show my screen real quick, you know, the interesting thing I was, I was really driving into the, uh, driving into this topic because, why do I? Why do we, as uh, in our younger ages, why do we make so much stupid mistakes? And, you, and you're older, and you're like, why did I do that when I was 18? Why did I do that when I was 20? Why did I do that mm-hmm. when I was 21? And in reading this article, you might not see it, but it's the maturation of the adolescent brain, mm-hmm. right? Uh, you, you know about this with uh, working with uh, with uh, uh, kids with disabilities. Mm-hmm. According to this article, as I was unpacking it, there's many different areas of maturity to the the, the adolescent brain, mm-hmm. and the male brain. Tends to fully mature the prefront, the pre, I got the pre, I'm getting all medical here. The prefrontal cortex, which is the, the decision making process that the brain doesn't fully develop, at least in men, until their mid 20s. Uh, women, earlier. That's why you find a lot more women that know what they want with their life. And that's mm-hmm. why maybe, maybe uh, you know, 18, 19, 20 year old women are like, these guys don't know what the hell they want in their life. That's why mm-hmm. I don't want to date these guys. I mm-hmm. want to maybe date older guys that are a little bit more established. What, what's your thoughts mm-hmm. on? Um, maybe the age gap, oh. or th- does that play into, yeah. oh. is that a factor? Does it? Oh, man. Okay, well, let me tell you this. Okay, this is just based on my experience, okay? okay? I have dated, um, I'm just going to say it. I'm going to be transparent. I'm be 39 proud. years old. I will be 40 in June. Um, I what? have. No way. Yes. Good Thank for you. you. You guys are guessing me up. Thank you. I mean, I wouldn't. Yeah. Knock, knock yourself out, girlfriend. Thank you, you, sir. Must Thank be the, you. the Korean facials or something like that. <laughs> Just my wife's stuff. She use Korean yeah. facial products. Yes. Um, so I'm going to have to talk to her about yeah, this. For sure. <laughs> um, but I've dated older men, right, that are just completely emotionally unavailable, are an absolute disaster. Um, you would expect right? That because they're older, like they have their stuff together and, yeah. you know, but I have not, that has not been what, my experience. Like how much older? Um, maybe like five, six 
okay. years older than me, so like maybe gotcha. like around forty six. Gotcha. Ish, yeah, um, yeah, or, or maybe I mean like some one of them was divorced and he was yeah. just very damaged. Um, yeah. So I've had some experiences like that where, and then I've also had younger men um, pursue me, and I, I don't know, it's pleasantly surprised like they. Have Stepping their up. stuff together, mm-hmm. yeah. You know, don't um, aren't like partying and drinking and all of that. More focused on their goals, and that's very attractive. So interesting. What what about same age? Any same age? Uh, yeah, I have. Yeah, my ex and I, we were the same age. Yeah. Got it. Mm-hmm. So it's, to some extent, you're almost destroying the the stereotype that older men have it together. I mean, they just because okay, experience. you can be a high value man, yeah. right? And like. Um, or you can be an older man or a man yeah. with money and yeah. not necessarily be a high value man. Or yeah, that's, have that's, emotional why, intelligence. Yeah, that's why we've, we've you know, on this show, we've we tried to destroy not just not just having high value, whether it be male or female, right? It's like you got to be high character too. Absolutely. You know, because what good is it if, for example, what's the narrative today? The narrative today is ladies, stay home, stick with one man, don't go party, have kids. Grow your family. Mm-hmm. Can't skip out on your man. You mm-hmm. skip out on your man, we're gonna we're gonna banish you from 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 the circle forever. Mm-hmm. But me as a man, I can go out there. I can sow my sow my oats. Mm-hmm. So it's flip. Mm-hmm. But yet I expect the woman to mm-hmm. follow that rule. Not me though. Right. It's like a double standard. Yeah. Absolutely. So I think it's that's not value to me. That's mm-hmm. lack of character. I think both men and women need to do better. On, mm-hmm. on, on both sides. Definitely. Uh, your thoughts on that? Mr. High Value Man, High Character Man. Yeah. Mr. Millionaire Goals Podcast co-host. My mm-hmm. man. I, I, I think for me, um, and, I, and I keep telling this to a lot of the younger guys that, I, that come out and visit and hang out, I think as, as much as we want to be in a relationship, I think one of the biggest things for men, uh, a biggest struggle, at least for me, uh, we've spoken about this in a previous podcast, Matt, um, just like women have biological clocks, and they feel like they need to rush into a marriage relationship or whatnot just to settle down just so they can provide the family that, uh, according to society, they're supposed to, I think, for a lot of men, especially for me. If financially I'm not in a position where I can retire my future wife, so I meet someone, I fall in love, head over heels, we end up getting married, I want that woman to be able to have the option of saying, hey, I don't want to work, and maybe be able to say, hey, cool, just hang out, do what you want to do, build something, do something, have a hobby, and just, you know, just don't do what nothing. What happens if she wants to partner with you? Let me build your, your fitness company. Fantastic. That'd be amazing. That'd be beautiful, right? <laughs> but I, I want to be able to have that option because, I'm, yeah. you know, in, in, in growing up, my, my, my mom didn't have that option. Both of my parents had to work two jobs in order to be able to make it in life. And I just yeah. don't want that struggle to happen to the woman that I end up with. So uh, until I'm able to get in the position of being able to, uh, re- quote unquote, retire my wife, my future spouse, I don't mentally feel driven to even entertain the idea of a relationship. I don't, I'm not sure if that's a Milton thing. I'm not sure if that's a man thing. I'm not sure if that's an ego thing. But right now, I'm in a position in my life where I just I feel like I need to accomplish a couple more things before I'm able to fully throw myself at, a, at another human being. Yeah, I mean, yeah. I felt that way when I got married and divorced at 22 years old, all in the same year. Sure. Erica, you may not know this about me. So I got married. I came back from uh. the deployment. I got married, uh, had a kid, got divorced, filed bankruptcy, all, chronological uh. order, mm-hmm. all in the same year. Mm-hmm. It, was, it was turmoil. You know, so my, my, my pitch to, to men and women out there is, is uh, you probably don't want to pick up a woman or a man in a club. Mm-hmm. It was for me. Yeah. You know, you're inebriated. Yeah. You know, you, you're looking at her, you're looking at each other at the bottom of a beer glass. <laughs> yeah. She's hot. He's hot. You know, and then you wake up like, oh, shit, I got to deal with you now. And oh, yeah, this, OK, let's try to do that again. And you next thing you know, your life is centered around clubbing. And then you get into an argument and it's centered around clubbing, you know, mm. that's where you go back to. Bad, 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 bad scenario. So if you like that clip, please watch this one right here. If you want to see the full podcast, click right here.